And uh, one of the questions uh, that we're interested in is uh, the following. Does there uh, exist a, uh, an asymptotically flat back in space time? that um, admits uh, radiation. And um, of course, I mean, their, their existence is guaranteed. Um, but today, I want to talk about um, the simplest example of, the, of this type. So yesterday, uh, we talked about Mikowski and, um, and Schwarzschild. And uh, Vizia. Yeah, in fact, they, they all, all these metrics are of this particular form. Um, you recall my notation uh, that this is actually uh, the standard uh, round metric on the two sphere. Okay. And uh, of course, Minkowski case will correspond to mu uh, is equal to zero. And the Schwarzschild case correspond to mu is equal to a, a constant. Okay. So um, these space times are actually um, static, um, I mean, or, or at least stationary. So uh, there's actually no radiation. And this one here um, emit, uh, emits radiation. Okay. So this emits. Uh, radiation, but this is now vacuum. And we're interested in gravitational radiation, so radiation caused by gravitational field. And as I mentioned, uh, for Vizia space time, there's actually a matter field, uh, now dust, okay? Um, and all these uh, space times are actually spherical symmetric. Uh, because this part here, um, so this is actually a um, wrong metric on, uh, on a unisphere. Um, so there's actually this uh, group of O3 um, that acts, acts on this, uh, uh, this part here. So this is a spherical symmetry on this one here. Okay? And of course, spherical symmetry is based on they're actually much easier. Um, and you're, but um, there is this uh, theorem of Burkhoff. Okay? I'll tell you that once you have a four-dimensional space-time, uh, that is a vacuum and a spherical symmetric. And that implies uh, it is actually locally isometric uh, to the Schwarzschild space-time. So this is a very uh, strong uh, result. Uh, it's purely local. It has nothing to do with uh, asymptotically uh, flatness. And therefore, we, we know if we are actually looking for a, uh, an asymptotic flat vacuum space time that emits uh, radiation, we have to go beyond spherical symmetry. Okay? We, well, you we cannot have a, a spherical symmetric case. And therefore, um, we're, we're trying to, or, or try to modify this, this metric. We have to give up a spherical symmetry, so we have to change this one here. But as I say, uh, since we're interested in uh, radiation, so in particular, we're, we're interested in now geodesics. Okay. And you recall um, a very important property of this uh, space time is that um, for all these uh, uh, space time, we actually have this particular uh, now geodesic vector. So L is DDR. Okay. Um, this one actually uh, generates now geodesics, okay? so you, we actually have uh, L, L uh, is equal to zero. And so this indicates it's a now vector. Uh, so if you look at its integral curve, um, that's actually now curve. And this tells you that this is actually a geodesic. So these are actually now geodesics. This is DDR here. Okay, we verified last time. And it actually satisfies. 
um, this condition, um, L, E, A, E, B. Um, in fact, I can actually, uh, I think this is exactly equal to uh, 1 over R, E, A, E, B. And we take uh, E2 is equal to uh, 1 over R, uh, D, D, theta, and uh, E3 is equal to 1 over R, 1 over sine theta of D, D, phi. So we can take our sonoma friend here, and you can check that this, uh, um, this condition uh, is actually satisfied. Okay, um, you know this is really just a uh, you know th these will correspond to Christopher symbols, and then you can just uh, use a formula for Christopher symbols because you know the metric explicitly, so you can actually calculate this uh, easily. Okay, and um, so the generalization we're looking at is the so-called uh, robinson troutman space-time. Okay. So the Robinson. Okay, um, this is in a way the simplest uh, example of an asymptotically flat vacuum space up that emit uh, radiation. Okay, and there are different ways to um, to characterize um, uh, robinson troutman space time. Uh, for example, uh, oh, actually, by the way, I haven't, well, I forgot to mention. Um, so, other than the references that I gave yesterday, uh, this one, two, three. Uh, there's also this uh, uh, number four here um, that I would uh, refer to. This is a paper of bounding sex formalism. Okay. So, um, yeah, if you look at uh, reference two here, um, this is basically an encyclopedia of all, um, you know, uh, space time uh, that can actually be, uh, be, be constructed uh, explicitly. Um, so, this Robinson Trauman space time, there are different ways to characterize. One of them is so called uh, algebraically special. Of, uh, of uh, patrol type, uh, patrol of, um, type D. But I don't, I don't really want to go into this kind of uh, classification. Um, this actually involved the, um, the vowel curvature. Yesterday I, I talked about, you know, you have a, a vacuum space time. Then all the information of curvature are contained in the vowel curvature, okay? So this is a case when you actually, you can use the vowel curvatures to, uh, to construct a, a matrix. And then you look at the uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix, and that will give you, um, I mean, that will actually, that can be used to, to characterize uh, Robinson Troutman space time. Okay. But um, there is actually a different uh, characterization, and I think that's a more relevant one. Uh, that's actually in terms of null geodesics. Okay. So this is actually, um, so, well, this is actually the first characterization, the second one. Um, so space time, so this is actually a uh, space time that emits. A uh, now geodesic congruence um, that is shear free, twist free, and um, of positive divergence. Okay, uh, if you look at the book, uh, everything is formulated uh, in terms of this uh, spin coefficient uh, that looks somehow, um, you know, quite, uh, quite abstract. But let, let me just explain to you what, what, is, uh, what is condition mean. So what it means is actually um, there exists a, a null friend. So L, and let me write it as L bar and EA. So A is equal to 2 and 3. Uh, well, I mean, let's say this is, is a friend, also normal friend. Um, okay, so um, well, maybe uh, let me, there exists a friend, okay, um, such that um, EA, they're actually um, also normal. Okay, and L um, and L bar, they're both now. Uh, such that, okay, well, so first of all, L has to be a null geodesic congruence. So first of all, you have L, L, well, we don't know L, L is equal to zero. So we have L, L is equal to zero. You know, just like the DDR here, 
okay, or, or for, uh, for any of the space time up there. So L actually generate uh, now geodesics. Okay, so you recall this, uh, this is a DDR direction. Right? Right? And these are, uh, these correspond to U equal to constant. And um, <coughs> and also, and then uh, shear free. So, what does shear free mean? Shear free means uh, L uh, E two plus I E three E two plus I E three. This is equal to zero. Okay, this is a uh, shear free. And um, Thirdly, uh, the imaginary part of L, E2 plus IE3, E2 minus IE3 is equal to zero. So this means uh, twist free. And um, the real part of uh, L, E2 plus IE3, E2 minus IE3 uh, is positive. So this means uh, a po this, is a, this correspond to positive divergence. So can this interpretation have mean cross section? Yeah, yeah, sure. That's, that's what I'm going to do. But, uh, you know, whenever you talk about spin coefficient, they like to, uh, you know, cook up some imaginary uh, vector, okay? Uh, but just, you know, don't, don't worry. Just, just expand it. Um, so, for example, what is 2 here? Well, you write down the real part, imaginary part. So that's L, E2, uh, E2 minus uh, L, E3, E3. So this is a real part, right? And then plus uh, the imaginary part. So this is L, E2, E3 plus um, L, uh, E3. L E two. Okay, so you want this is equal to zero. And what is the three here? Three, you just want the uh, imaginary part. So it actually tell you that L of E two uh, E three minus uh, E three L E two. This is equal to zero. And four, uh, you want the real part be equal to to positive. This is positive. Okay, so this is a simple, uh, you know, expansion. Yeah, just, you know, although you have an I here, just don't worry about it. Um, just do the expansion. Then you're going to have this, uh, this condition here, okay? And um, so the first one is called shear free, and this is actually a complex shear, okay? But you see that it's telling you that this is equal to this. These two are actually the same. Okay. I mean, a good way to think about it is just to think about this L here as a, as a normal here, and then uh, this E2, E3 will correspond to also normal in the tangential direction. Okay. And this will basically tell you that the two um, second fundamental form coefficients are actually the same. And this one here, uh, together with this one, okay, this is a third condition tell you that you can switch uh, two and three here. So, and together with this one here, it just tells you the off diagonal terms are actually equal to zero. And the third one tells you that this is actually positive. Is that okay? Okay. But these are the physical conditions that you know, physicists uh, re refer to. Uh, I mean, it's, it's often written down in terms of, uh, um, you know, well, there, there's a notation called kappa equals zero, sigma equals zero, if you look at the book. But really, this is, uh, this is what I mean. Okay. But you can see that if we actually use uh, L2, L3, uh, then this condition can actually be, um, well, then it's 2 plus 2. 2 plus 3 plus 4 actually implies um, L, E, A, E, B is actually proportional to the metric. Okay, if we actually have orthonormal, uh, or, or we actually have a, um, you know, um, orthonormal basis. So these two are actually the same. 
and the north dial term are actually equal to zero, okay? And the trace is actually positive, so uh, maybe I should, well, I should say this is positive uh, proportion. Okay? And of course, um, this is satisfied by, um, by all these, uh, uh, these examples here, okay? And, um, and therefore, well, we know we have to go beyond uh, spherical symmetry, and therefore, um, this actually, um, well, we actually have to change this part here. This can no longer be a, be a wrong metric here, okay? But this is actually the one uh, we're going to base on, okay? So it turns out, um, if we actually assume this, uh, um, these conditions, then you can actually write down an ansatz uh, for this, uh, this kind of metric, okay? So um, this actually will imply that there exists a U, R, uh, X, A coordinate. such that um, this uh, uh, L is equal to DDR. So this is uh, uh, now geodesic. And, uh, and the metric takes the form. Um, minus phi du squared. Uh, minus 2 du dr plus r square e to the lambda uh, sigma tilde a b dx a dx b. <coughs> okay. And um, so you can see that this is actually a generalization of this form here. And um, well, somehow we need, uh, we, we can actually argue this form here. So for example, um, well, we need this uh, DDR here to be uh, now geodesic. So this actually implies that uh, GRR is equal to uh, DDR. DDR, uh, this is equal to zero, okay? And we also need uh, DDR, DDR uh, is equal to zero. And if we look at uh, DDR, DDR, now with any uh, component, then you can actually write down uh, this, right? So we, we, uh, we wrote down this here, so this is dr g r alpha, and then uh, minus, I think, a half of uh, d alpha g r r. Okay? So if we, uh, but now we actually have uh, uh, g r is already equal to so g r u is equal to minus what? So if we choose g r a is, is equal to zero, uh, which is actually of this form here, there's no GRE coefficient here, um, then this condition uh, is going to be satisfied. So this is actually this one here, this and this. So this condition will actually guarantee that DDR uh, is actually now geodesic. Is that okay? This is, uh, this is just, uh, you know, the, the one that follow from Christopher's symbol. Okay, and, and also uh, this condition, so uh, DDR, DDX, DDXB, I think this is just DR of GAB. Um, the, um, plus DAGRB minus DBGRA. So if we have GRA equals zero, this is actually DDR, DR of GAB. So this other condition will actually correspond to DR of GAB. It's actually proportion, proportional to, uh, to GAB. Okay? So you see that you're looking for, um, you can still take URXA uh, as coordinate here, uh, but you shouldn't have any uh, GRR coefficient. And you shouldn't, uh, your, your RU coefficient should be equal to one. It's equal to one here. And your RA coefficient should also be equal to one, uh, to, to equal to zero. Okay, and uh, in order to make this condition satisfy, uh, what you can do is, this is actually the GAB coefficient. So you can require that this, uh, uh, this lambda here uh, depend only on uh, U and XA instead of the R. Okay? So lambda is equal to lambda of U and XA. So okay. So a metric of this form here, 
we actually satisfy these coefficient assumptions, and therefore it's going to be a space time that emit the null geodesic. Um, that is actually a shear free, twist free, and a positive divergence. Okay. So you can consider this as a, as a, as a gauge. Okay. So the problem with the Einstein equation is that this is actually a um, geometric equation. So it's actually invariant under um, coordinate transformation. So you really, really want to uh, solve it, you have to, have to choose a gauge. Uh, you have to choose a coordinate system, and you have to write it down. Okay? Well, um, to metric. I mean, this is going to be you know, a function proportional to a metric, and the function changes and change sign, so it should be positive. Yeah, but I guess you, you want to go out to infinity. <laughs> okay? So think of this one here as a generalization of this. And we, we, we already dropped, uh, you know, this uh, uh, spherical symmetry because our, our lambda here is no longer, uh, you know, it's, it's no longer constant here. It can depend on u and xa here. Is that okay? Okay. And phi is just going to be an arbitrary function for the moment. But then we impose a uh, Wachtin Einstein equation. Okay, so now we impose um, okay. So um, it, it turns out um, vacant Einstein equation uh, is reduced to this two equation. Okay. So um, it, it turns out under this, uh, uh, this gauge, um, well, well, as I said, there, there should be 10, uh, uh, 10, um, there should be 10 um, <coughs> vacant Einstein equation uh, in four dimension. But somehow we, um, we already reduced the, um, the, the number of unknowns to two. So it's a lambda here and phi here. So we actually uh, ended up with uh, um, two equations, okay? And uh, that will determine uh, phi and lambda, okay? So, um, and this equation is somehow uh, complicated. <coughs> well, in a way, this first equation gives you the definition of phi here, okay? So how do you actually compute a phi here? Well, first of all, you have your lambda, okay? And then you take the Laplacian with respect to this metric here. Lambda is a function that depends on u and x, a. So you can take Laplacian with respect to this, uh, uh, this metric. And you multiply it by this one here. And this k here actually has a geometric meaning. Um, so k is actually k is actually the Gauss curvature of uh, of sigma, which is equal to e to the two lambda of sigma tilde. Okay. So if you take this conformal metric here uh, to sigma tilde, and then you compute uh, the Gauss curvature, and it's actually given by this. So you start with your lambda here, you compute your k, okay, and then you plug in this formula here, okay, um, so this is k, and m is actually uh, an integration constant, okay, and actually m appear as an, um, and it is related, um, it is actually related to the, uh, to the mass that we're going to see. But um, yeah, for, for well, we we can we we uh, we, we can uh, well, it actually could be any constant uh, at this at this for now, okay? M is a constant. No, no, you, no, you, yeah. So in particular, you can see that it's phi here uh, depend only on uh, u and x a. Okay. 
So that is the, um, the first equation. I give you the, the phi here. And what is the second equation? Uh, you see lambda uh, depend on these two variables here. Uh, we're taking lambda uh, with respect to this u variable. And for the right-hand side here, uh, you notice that k actually correspond to uh, the twice special derivative. I mean, we take derivative in the, uh, this xa direction, so in this direction. So you have a Laplace operator, and then this is a k, and then you take Laplace again. So this is actually a fourth order operator. So this one here is actually fourth order in, uh, in lambda. Okay. So the left-hand side, so you, lambda uh, depends on u and xa variable. The left-hand side is just a partial derivative of lambda with respect to u. And the right-hand side um, basically corresponds to double Laplace of, uh, of lambda here. And uh, if you actually assume m is positive, uh, then this is actually a parabolic equation, forward parabolic equation. Okay. And um, in fact, this is actually a, a so-called Calabi flow uh, from complex geometry. Okay. Um, Calabi actually started from this uh, um, functional that corresponds to the scalar curvature square. And then uh, it turns out the order Lagrange equation is actually, uh, well, will we'll actually give you this, uh, well, the gradient flow will actually give you this, uh, this Calabi flow here. Okay, so this is actually. <clears throat> okay, and um, so this is, uh, um, and, and you can actually um, solve this equation. So the picture is actually the following. So it's actually, um, you know, we, we again, I mean, the picture is, uh, so this is your u equal to constant u zero here. And you can see that this, uh, this lambda here um, doesn't really depend on r. It doesn't really depend on r at all. So in a way that if you look at this picture, you recall uh, r is actually this direction. So it doesn't really change in this direction. Okay. And um, this is a parabolic equation, so you actually have to uh, specify initial data. So uh, you can actually take a u equal to constant slice. So u will play the role of, uh, of retarded time. And you actually can specify um, initial data here. Okay. And the, um, so the equation is actually, uh, so this is actually, uh, let me call this star. Star is actually solved um, by, uh, by Cushio. In this, uh, in the reference three. Okay, so you can actually solve this equation, but uh, unfortunately, this is no longer explicit. I mean, you actually have to solve a parabolic equation. So unlike the divide the space time, uh, but uh, in a way that you you basically just you can see that um, yeah by choosing this gauge and Einstein equation, you really just reduce to a single equation here, and you can use this equation to uh, to construct a uh, a, a, a vacuum space time uh, that actually. Uh, well, we still want to say that this actually emit the radiation, right? Um, and it turns out um, there is actually a formula uh, that is actually very uh, similar, very closely related to the case of YDR space time. So you recall uh, for YDR space time, um, the natural uh, energy condition will actually correspond to this kind of uh, inequality. And as I said, that will actually correspond to energy radiation along uh, U equal to a constant hypersurface. And it turns out um, there is actually a uh, inequality uh, that is actually important, uh, play an important role in, in the proof of this, uh, uh, this theorem here. And it actually corresponds to this uh, uh, boundary, uh, this uh, uh, mass loss formula. Okay. So that shows that this is actually a space time uh, with, uh, with radiation. So. Yeah, but this is already, uh, you know, th there's already this phi here. And then, uh, so you, when you calculate it, you actually enter again. Yeah. OK, so, um, so well, I, I don't want to go into this, um, but uh, maybe we, we can say a few words. So it turns out the mass, uh, the total mass, of a, um, a U level set is actually uh, this MU 
that correspond to m divided by 4 pi and the integral of s2 of e to the uh, 3 lambda dv lambda, where v lambda uh, is the, uh, the area of form of uh, sigma tilde. Okay, so we want to study this, uh, uh, yeah, the radiation. As I mentioned, uh, it's always about um, yeah, you have different, you know, you have source here, right? And then uh, you have some u is equal to u1 and u is equal to uh, u2. And you want to see that the, um, the, en the mass gets decreased or energy uh, radiated away um, in this, uh, this null direction. Okay? So um, it turns out the, the total mass um, actually, um, well, it, it, well it's, it's different from the, the, the previous case where you can just read off from this, uh, uh, this function here. And, um, and a different way to, uh, to motivate this, uh, this total mass. But uh, yeah, by now, since we have quasi-local mass, so you can just take a quasi-local mass and you take a limit, and you, you can see this, uh, uh, this is the expression, okay? And now, um, if we want to study uh, what, what, how this uh, mass changed, of course, we have to take a derivative. So um, then du of mu is just equal to one over 16 pi of uh, S2 e to the lambda Laplace tilde k of uh, dv tilde. Okay, so uh, what you do is you just differentiate this term here, right? Um, so well, when we take uh, <coughs> when we take du of mu, um, only the integrand involve um, involve u. So this is just m over four pi, right? And then this is just uh, three times uh, e to the three lambda. And d lambda du is given by that expression. So it's actually one over twelve m e to the uh, minus 2 lambda Laplace tilde of k and d v tilde. And you collect terms, you see this is uh, exactly the, uh, this expression here. Okay. So now it becomes, uh, um, yeah, it, you, yeah, it just, uh, um, yeah, it's actually just an inequality uh, on the sphere now. Um, namely, uh, you have a function here, right, um, on your two sphere. And this is the definition of your, your k. Okay. <clears throat> so function, lambda is just any function um, on a two sphere. Then you compute the Laplace of lambda uh, and you form this expression which corresponds to the Gauss curvature, right? So this one here, it's just e to the minus two lambda, uh, one minus lambda. And now uh, we want to claim that this is actually non-positive. Okay, and um, you can actually check um, Kuchel's paper, but uh, Kuchel just used uh, you know calculate using uh, you know complex geometry using a d bar and d operator to do it. And you can do that, um, but uh, actually Yi Kai come up with uh, with a calculation. <laughs> Without without using this, and let me just write down the uh, the answer here. But now you, I think you have to do. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's somehow quite quite involved calculation. Uh, you have to do integration by parts, uh, maybe uh, six seven times. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Can you just move to a question over? And... Yeah, but you want to. Uh, yeah, let, let me just write down the answer. Okay, because at the end you want to complete square. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is uh, if we actually set rho is equal to e to the lambda. Uh, rho minus one to e to the lambda. Okay, or maybe rho is equal to e to the minus lambda. Okay, then you can actually simplify this expression to uh, one over sixteen pi as two, and then uh, rho minus two Hessian of rho square uh, plus Laplace of rho square. Okay, so it, it turns out it's actually better to write it in terms of this uh, uh, this new variable uh, rho here, which is equal to e to the uh, minus lambda. Okay, and this is just a Hessian of rho as a uh, zero two tensor, and you take uh, its norm square with respect to the metric, and this is Laplace of rho square. 
And the reason why this is, uh, is positive uh, or, or non-negative uh, is because uh, you can actually complete square here. So you can actually write it as uh, minus 1 over a pi as 2 rho Hessian rho minus um, a half of the Hessian rho um, sigma theta square dv theta. Yeah, and this is right. Okay. So um, yeah, you yeah you can just play around with it. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, this this part here is purely algebraic. Okay. You take this one here, and you can actually complete square, and um, and this is it. Okay. And therefore, um, this is uh, manifestly non-positive. Okay, and therefore, when you move along the uh, u direction, so this is your ddu direction, <coughs> the mass is actually decreasing, and uh, there is energy radiation. Okay, <coughs> okay. so um, so you can also look at the case um, when uh, there's actually a uh, uh, when the radiation is equal to zero, okay. So of course that will correspond to this is equal to to zero, okay. But um, this this is actually a um, um, this is equal to zero. This is as a, as a, as a, a tensor is equal to zero. Um, this actually implies uh, this is actually uh, implies that. Um, Rho is a um, minus two eigenfunction of the Laplace operator. Okay, so this is actually uh, an overdetermined equation, and the only possible solutions are those uh, that correspond to the uh, um, to the uh, you know lowest mode uh, harmonic uh, eigenfunctions. Okay, and what, what, yes? Huh? Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm actually, okay, uh, this is actually not right, yeah. <laughs> so rho is actually equal to alpha zero plus some alpha i, y i, okay? Where, uh, yeah. Where y i, uh, I guess in this case uh, it's actually okay to choose uh, uh, rho rho to be any anything of them, but in order to satisfy this condition that e is equal to uh, e to the minus lambda, this implies that rho rho actually has to be positive. Okay, so where y i are uh, i is equal to one two three. Um, let's say. Uh, also normal basis of uh, minus two eigenfunctions. And um, alpha zero, alpha i form a, uh, a unit come like uh, four vector. Okay, and um, this this turned out to be uh, to be quite important because um, this is actually related to the um, to the boost here. Um, and in fact, um, if you check here, uh, it, it turns out um, yeah maybe I can write it here. Okay, so you see that e to the minus two lambda uh, is actually uh, corresponds to this row here. So uh, we can see that um, if you actually take this kind of factor, so uh, row to the minus two. So you just take uh, alpha zero plus alpha i, y i uh, minus two, multiplied by the sigma theta. Okay. 
Okay. Um, it turns out um, this x actually has Gauss curvature uh, equals one. So this corresponds to the uh, conformal isometry of uh, of a sphere. Okay. You can take your round metric here, and then um, yeah, you you apply a conformal uh, isometry, and then uh, you get a conformal metric that doesn't look like a wrong metric. But uh, this is actually a wrong metric that it has k equal to one. Okay. If I have a time, I'll actually come back to the, to this one here. And in fact, um, in this case, you can conclude um, that this this case k is exactly equal to one. So if k is equal to one here, this is zero. So this is one minus two and divided by r. And d lambda du in this case, uh, lambda is just uh, you know lambda and rho they are just related by this. So lambda, of course, is uh, independent of u there. So you can see that um, if there's no radiation, then, um, then the uh, robinson trautmann space time actually reduced to Schwarzschild. Because this is 1, this is 0, minus 2m squared. That's the leading coefficient. And this uh, d lambda, this is trivially satisfied. OK. OK. Um, <clears throat> So this is uh, the robinson trautmann space time. Okay, uh, it's uh, it's somehow uh, less explicit, but we actually reduce this one here to, uh, to to solving this equation that can be solved, and you can even work out uh, the mass, and you'll see the uh, the energy radiation. Okay. Are there any questions? Yes. As I say, it's a, it's an integration constant. You when you when you when you write down an um, OD or PDE and you, when you integrate, um, you know you you will involve some constant over there, okay, and then you just set a constant equal to m. Yeah, m so far uh, actually can be any can be anything. But uh, the important appear in several places. So for example, in here, uh, if m is positive, um, then this equation is actually parabolic. Okay, you see, if you change the sign here, it's going to be reverse parabolic. And m also appear here. So this is equal to m. m is equal to, and if you, you know, if, if you want a, a more natural space and you want the mass to be positive. So you want to assume this m is actually positive. So um, actually, in, in a follow-up paper, uh, Kushio actually studied the global uh, structure of this kind of space-time. I mean, uh, you know, usually while well, you have a Schwarzschild space-time, that m positive correspond to the existence of a horizon, and, and negative will correspond to a naked, native, uh, naked singularity. And you can actually study similar features uh, for this kind of robinson trautmann space-time. Yeah, I hope this picture is clear. I mean, you, you start with this kind of characterization using now geodesics, and you write down an ansatz um, for, this, uh, for this metric, and you plug in the, 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 uh, the vacuum Einstein equation, and you solve it, and you identify the mass, and then you realize the mass is actually decreasing. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's move on to the next, next topic. Uh, I, yeah, I want to talk about this kind of uh, bondy sex uh, description. And, um, well, as I mentioned, this, uh, this, uh, uh, the Robinson Trauma Space Time come up with, uh, uh, you know, from, from this kind of uh, assumption. You, you assume that there's a now geodesic, or you assume it's actually uh, algebraic special. And um, so this uh, uh, bondy sex uh, formalism, that's actually the title of this reference here, actually corresponds to a description uh, for more general space time. Okay, so we're, we're not going to assume it's actually uh, special. Um, and, uh, but uh, the uh, this description is, uh, uh, is, is only for um, the neighborhood of, uh, of, of scribe. Okay. Scribe plus. Right. Metric, I'm sorry? It, 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 it is. 
It is still structural. In fact, uh, yeah, uh, but it is. In fact, um, maybe it's a good idea to just explain to this part better than, than go into <laughs> bonding sex. Because I, I was planning to go into bonding sex, and I talk about BMS group, and then I'll, I'll refer to this. Uh, but yeah, may, maybe it's it, yeah, because it looks a little bit weird. Um, okay, so maybe. Uh, yeah, so why, why, uh, why is um, a wrong metric of Gauss curvature equals one? <laughs> huh? Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so, so this the so this is actually the the picture. I mean, if you if you like, you can. You, this is just a you know d theta square plus sine square theta d phi square. Okay, and then uh, you can take y one to be sine theta sine phi, uh, y two is equal to sine theta cosine phi, and y three is equal to uh, cosine theta. And that actually corresponds to the three, uh, three uh, eigenfunctions of the Laplace operator. Okay, they are called the uh, L equal to one spherical harmonics. And alpha zero, alpha i, um, this is actually, uh, this is a unit, uh, few, well, I think we want it to be a future unit timeline for vector. Um, yeah, maybe we'll derive differently. <laughs> no, this is kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so the different ways to explain this, you can actually use, uh, um, you know, conformal geometry um, to, to explain that. Um, I mean, the conformal group of, uh, of S2. Which is actually the same as a uh, uh, complex plane. Um, they're just, you know, this uh, is PSL2C. You know, the, uh, what is that called? Uh, there's a different name in complex geometry. Uh, uh, what is that called? <laughs> you know, AZ plus B, CZ plus D. Okay. Huh? Mobile transformation, yeah, yeah. Okay, but this is one way to look at it. But uh, this is actually closely related to uh, to this uh, space-time geometry. So I like to uh, talk about it. So there, this fact. So let's just look at uh, R three one the Mikowski space, right? And I have, uh, you know, I can use one coordinate system x zero, x one, x two, x three. So this is a um, Cartesian coordinate. But I can also use this u and r and theta phi coordinate. So this is spherical coordinate. You can write down uh, the metric. So here, here are some basic facts. So the, the isometry group, so O31 uh, acts on R31 by, uh, by isometry. Okay, because the, the metric is actually just minus dx0 square plus some ancient i, one, two, three, uh, xi dxi squared. So you see that it, um, it actually acts by, uh, by our symmetry. Okay. And also, uh, O31 um, actually preserves uh, the light cone. Okay, so here the light cone is just minus x0 plus uh, summation xi squared um, equals, uh, equals 0. Okay, um, so this is, uh, let's say this is a light cone in, uh, in Mikowski uh, space here. Uh, <coughs> this is a square. Okay. You could, th this is a, yeah, this is the, this is a, what? Well, this is how you define O31. You write down a, 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 a quadratic form, right? And the, the, the preserve this, okay? So um, the thing is that, I mean, if you take, uh, yeah, for example, if you take a sphere here that corresponds to x0 equals to 1, and you, you cut it, 
um, you're going to see a wrong sphere, a perfectly uh, wrong sphere. Okay. But uh, the, the thing is that, well, you can actually, you know, you can actually move everything by O31. Okay. And um, and it's not going to look wrong. Okay. So you put put, put a, a, an, a, a, an action of O31. It doesn't. It's not going to look wrong. Um, but because of this, uh, uh, this property, it's actually isometry, so it, sh it is a still a wrong metric. Okay. I'm going to see what kind of wrong metric uh, you, you, you have. Um, and it turns out it's exactly of this form. Okay, so let's see. Um, suppose uh, uh, A alpha beta is a, a constant matrix in O31, and let's just take this in the new uh, time coordinate. X zero is equal to, so this is going to be A zero beta uh, X beta. Well, my alpha beta goes from uh, you know alpha beta goes from zero one two three. Okay. So this is going to be my new time coordinate. Okay? And the question now I have is, is what is the, what is the induced metric? Um, um, a surface is defined by A0 beta x beta is equal to 1. Okay? So you'll read, this, is, this is a new one. This is x0 is equal to 1. And um, and u is equal to zero, or the other, you know. And uh, and the light cone. Okay, maybe I just you put u is equal to zero. So it's on the light cone. But you recall, um, well, the metric for Mikowski space is actually this one. Okay, so this is uh, this is the um, induced. This is actually uh, this is actually the metric of Mikowski space, and I'm using this. Uh, this is cut by this. Uh, this is a light cone, right? And you cut by this uh, by this plan. And I want to see the, the induced metric. Um, but of course, u is equal to 0. So these are equal to 0. But I want to find out what r is. Okay? So let's just try to let's just consider them as a simultaneous equation. And let's try to solve for, for r. Okay? Let's try to solve for r. OK? So how do we actually solve for r? Um, this u equals 0 actually implies x0. Uh, is actually equal to r because it's t. This is r, right? You could call this is actually t equal to t minus r. And I can write uh, this x beta here, uh, x i, i goes from one to three, uh, to be equal to r times uh, uh, y i, where uh, y i are given by um, this double star. Right? This is a standard uh, coordinate transformation formula. You know, you go from Cartesian coordinate to uh, to uh, to spherical coordinate. Right? This is exactly the, the formula. Okay, and therefore we can write down this one here. That's actually a zero zero x zero plus a zero i. Uh, xi is equal to 1. Now x0 is equal to r. xi is equal to r, yi. So you can see you can factorize an r here at a0, 0 plus a0, i, yi. This is equal to 1. And therefore, you guys should solve for r. And you can see that uh, once you plug in this equation here, you get an induced metric. And this induced metric is exactly this one here. 
so the induced metric. It's actually um, okay. and this is a wrong metric <laughs> because we know O31 is an isometry. Okay, so this doesn't look like a wrong one, but it is a wrong one. And in a previous example, we can just really just do a co use a coordinate change and make it into a, the standard Schwarzschild metric. And well, as I said, this is going to reappear in, in the BMS group uh, transformation. Okay, uh, we're going to see that this is uh, correspond to the symmetry. Okay. Wait, is this the way you want to derive? Exactly the same. <laughs> okay, but you can then you can use it. <laughs> okay. But it's, it's hard to find a good reference, right? I don't, I don't know where, where <laughs> this can be found. Well, now we know. Huh? Now we know. But you, 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 can you, why, can, oh, can no, you? No, no. I've never seen, usually it's not a compass geometry. They use the. Uh, yeah, this uh, PSL2. And they yeah. use the conformal. Yeah, right. But I guess this is more, more, re more, more related to this, uh, the coordinate. Though, okay. Yeah. okay um, so let's, let's move on to the uh, bounded sex uh, description of uh, or maybe bond is x coordinates. So in a way, in a similar uh, philosophy, uh, well, we, we are going to choose a coordinate, okay? Um, just like in the, in the robinson troutman case. And then we're going to solve uh, um, the Vakin einstein equation, okay? Or at least we want to write down the equation. And then uh, we're going to see uh, 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 radiation near, near square plus. But this coordinate system is somehow um, somehow different uh, from um, from the uh, robinson charman case. So just to comparison, let me just still use uh, so this is still uh, use U R and X A. Okay, so you recall we always said this. Okay, so we start with the uh, start with U coordinate. Okay. So uh, we we require. Um, U equals to a uh, constant, so level sets are actually uh, are now hypersurfaces. Okay, and this actually implies that um, this gradient U square, this is a null vector, or this is actually E alpha beta, D alpha U, D beta U is equal to zero. Where, uh, well, we can actually start with uh, x tilde alpha and g alpha beta um, arbitrary and arbitrary coordinate. And uh, the metric is equal to g alpha beta dx alpha dx beta. Okay. So let's start with uh, an arbitrary uh, coordinate system, and then we're going to find a, a, a good coordinate system um, that's so-called bounding uh, bounding sex coordinate system, and to describe uh, gravitational uh, radiation. And first of all, uh, well, because we're interested in gravitational radiation, and we know now we actually have a good picture about, about what happened. We actually have uh, need to have a family of uh, you know u equal to constant um, hypersurfaces. And we want to see how um, energy radiates away. Okay, so of course we start with a coordinate u such that the level sets are uh, u. Okay, but um, <clears throat> but you, you, you can see that um, well suppose we actually have some uh, some coordinate system like this. So we we, we go from uh, some x theta alpha to uh, u r uh, theta and phi. Okay. This is a new coordinate system that we're interested in. Um, then this condition actually correspond to g upper u u is equal to zero in, uh, in the new coordinate. Right? 
when you go from one coordinate system to another coordinate system, you want to see how the metric coefficient uh, transform. Uh, this is, in fact, uh, uh, this actually corresponds to G upper UU coordinate. Okay. okay. And then um, we choose uh, uh, XA. So uh, uh, A is equal to 2, 3. Uh, on a uh, on a section of uh, a U level set, okay, so this is a, a U level set, and I start with a section here. I choose my X A um, and extend uh, by constancy along. Uh, indigo curves of gradient U. I mean, it's now geometry is actually f quite funny. I mean, this uh, the gradient U here. If this is a gradient, and uh, in fact, <laughs> gradient U is actually this direction. This is actually the, the now direction. Uh, you have to think of it a little bit carefully. Uh, I mean, in the previous picture, this gradient U is actually exactly the same as DDR. But DDR is now, so is uh, this gradient U here. Okay, so yeah, it, it, yeah. If you're working with uh, uh, Riemannian geometry, then your gradient vector is perpendicular to um, to the level set. Okay, but in now geometry, it turns out this uh, this uh, if U is actually uh, satisfy this equation, then gradient of U is actually um, yeah, is actually tangential to the to the level set of U. Okay, so well, I can choose this x a here, and I can take this one here, and I, for gradient u here, this is a noun vector. So actually, I can look at an integral curve here, and then I can extend this uh, whatever uh, you choose here by constancy along this. And what what it means is uh, is the following. Uh, so it actually means that the uh, g tilde alpha beta d x a d alpha x uh, a d beta u is equal to zero. Okay, so this is uh, this is what I mean by uh, x a is actually a constant, uh, you know, along the integral curve of, of gradient of u. And in terms of the m coordinate, this actually implies that g u a uh, is equal to zero. Okay, and uh, here these two are actually going to we're actually going to derive uh, some equations here. So uh, the, well, you recall these are the inverse matrix of U. Okay, so suppose uh, suppose uh, R is actually another coordinate. Well, R is another coordinate that uh, will be. Determine later well let's just take this uh, coordinate so we have u and r and x a here okay and suppose we have a metric already satisfied g u u is equal to zero and g u a is equal to zero okay then we can actually derive information about uh, about g uh, about g lower okay so first of all, um, while well, you recall this this uh, this 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 uh, condition, so g alpha beta, g beta gamma, this is actually equal to the delta function. I mean, this is how you define this uh, uh, inverse uh, the inverse uh, matrix, right? Okay. So this is delta u r. Let's look at delta u r. This is actually equal to g u alpha, g alpha r. Okay. But now you can see that it's a g of uh, well, alpha, uh, this alpha now uh, range from u and r, or this uh, little a here. But we already have gu equals 0, gu a equals 0. So the only possible uh, now 0 turn is when alpha is equal to r. So this is equal to gu r, g r r. And on the other hand, we have uh, 0 is equal to delta u a. Okay? So this is equal to gu alpha, g alpha a. And by the same argument, the only possible uh, 
Now zero one is when alpha is equal to r. So this is actually equal to g u r g r a. Okay. And um, well, if u is a coordinate variable, um, then one of them, well, and these two are already equal to zero. That implies this g u r cannot be equal to zero. Okay. Because u is a coordinate. And therefore, from here you can you have g r r is equal to zero, and is equal to g r a. Okay. Okay. And now we can actually write down the metric. So you can see that we have some g u u, d u square, right? And g r g r a they are all equal to zero. And then uh, we have some g u r. Let's write it as 2GUR, DU, DR. Okay. And GRA is equal to zero. And, uh, but we still have some 2GUA, uh, DU, DXA, and GAB, DXA, DXB. So this is what we uh, have now. Uh, so we actually eliminate, uh, so we eliminate. Uh, three components using this gauge. Okay, and so far this is actually uh, quite similar to the um, to the um, to the Robinson. And you can see that no matter which R you choose, you're always going to have a, a metric of this form here. R hasn't been chosen yet. R could be anything, okay? And before uh, you recall, we actually have uh, this coefficient equal to minus two in all this metric. And that is important. That actually implies that you actually, DDR is actually a now geodesic. And R actually corresponds to the FI uh, parameter, okay? But uh, in bonding sets coordinate, R is actually chosen differently, okay? And um, so, so, um, so we actually R, is actually chosen such that um, the uh, <coughs> such that um, r minus two the gab of this determinant uh, is independent of. Uh, U and R. So this is actually the, uh, the condition. Okay. And um, this condition can actually be achieved. Uh, this can be achieved by um, by using a uh, inverse Naomi curvature. So, well, you can compare with the, Bell, uh, the, the, the robinson trauman case. In that case, we, we simply just modify, um, you know, the metric by uh, multiplying a, uh, a conformal factor. But now, uh, we actually, we're basically requiring the area element of this metric is actually fixed. This actually cor corresponds to the area element scaled by this. Okay. And um, so, with, uh, with uh, these, uh, these conditions, The space are metric. Takes the form. Well, I'm going to follow this. So this is original, um, <coughs> written down by, uh, I think, by, by Sachs.
such that uh, determinant of HAP uh, depends only on, uh, on XA. So this is actually the, uh, I think this is, a, this is by sex, right? Or, or, or B, BBN. You can do it. BBN already wrote it in this way. Okay. Yeah. So somehow they, um, yeah, they, they write it in, in this way here. But let's just, uh, um, let's just check. You don't have any GRR term. Okay. There's no DR square. Okay. Um, so at least you know um, DDR is still, still, still correspond to a null direction. And there's no RA term. Okay, RA term. And um, you know, you, you can always do some completion. I mean, when, whenever you have some, something like this, um, then you can always uh, um, do completion of square. Okay. This is, uh, I mean, whenever you have GAB, then you can always write it as GAB of DXA plus some uh, gamma A DU DXB plus some gamma B DU and then uh, plus some other term in u squared. So this is what I mean by a uh, completing square. I mean, you have this term here, and you have some cross term. Then you can always write it uh, in, in this way uh, by choosing appropriate gamma here. But of course, you're going to get maybe minus. But you're going to get some uh, extra term here. Uh, in, but this is actually, this is exactly GAB gamma A gamma B du squared. So whenever you have something like this, you can always write in this, and maybe I'll put gamma here in this plus. Uh, no, it's still minus. <laughs> and then, then you can write it in this way. This is how you actually uh, complete the square here. Okay, so you can put a cross term of UA in, in, the, in this form here. Okay, and this du squared term, they just call it uh, beta, it involves beta and V. Um, and du dr, important, uh, du dr is no longer equal to one. Okay, this could be a function. And then uh, HAP here, okay, and also UA here. So in a way that the, the metric coefficient involve uh, beta and um, and UA and V and HAP here. So uh, you have one here and two here and one here and uh, and three here. So this is actually seven, uh, but because of this determining condition, uh, you you can subtract one. So this is actually. Uh, Six. So you actually you basically have six variables, and in fact, in, in the paper they, they were able to uh, to write down this uh, term G A H A B uh, in terms of two other variables, and this is this is actually the um, the right uh, number of components uh, because you you're on the four dimensional manifold, and then um, you can choose different coordinate, and you have four coordinate, so you actually have four degree of freedom, and originally you have. Um, uh, Lorentz metric in, 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 in four dimension, you had 10 components. So you can actually uh, use a gauge to kill uh, four of the components, and you're left with the six of the components. Okay. So this is actually the, uh, the condition. And um, the important thing here is that um, because of this particular choice here, uh, the Einstein equation actually has a hierarchy. Okay. And um, so the, the a special gauge uh, choice implies uh, a uh, pair rocky among um, Einstein's uh, equations. I still have 15 minutes, right? Yeah. Yeah, I got <laughs> and, well, I, I can try to finish, but maybe I'll be a little bit rushed, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> okay, so here, here's the, uh, here's the uh, hierarchy here. So, uh, well, you write down your Einstein equation. So now this is uh, E of uh, EAB. Uh, I'm sorry, this in, I actually have used a different index uh, from this note and also from the paper. Uh, because it's beta here. Uh, let, let me just change this index uh, to, from, from little AB to capital AB, sorry. 
because that will be a So now my A, B, they're uh, 2 to 3. And I'm going to be uh, using A, B for uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And of course, my, um, my X, 0 will be equal to U. My X, 1 is going to be R here. OK. And uh, the, the, you call the, the vacuum, vacuum Einstein equation. Correspond to EAB, um, which is equal to RAB minus a half R, GAB uh, is equal to zero. Okay, and also have the Bianchi equation or contracted Bianchi equation, correspond to the uh, conservation law. And this corresponds to zero is equal to B uh, EAB is equal to zero. This is a conservation law of this uh, uh, Bianchi equation. Okay. And this is actually equal to, uh, I mean, you can, you can write this one down in terms of the, uh, the metric. Uh, so. Okay, but now we're going to use this uh, uh, special structure, so our, our, our metric coefficient. Um, so we actually have uh, a DRR is equal to DRA is equal to zero, and we also have DUU uh, is equal to DUA is equal to zero. And also, we have this determinant of, uh, of HAB um, depends uh, only on, uh, on XA. Okay. But basically, you're, when, you're, when, when you play with, uh, um, with this equation here, uh, you actually get the, the, the following. Um, so here's, a, here's a, uh, the, 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 the <coughs> The, the, the steps uh, so the strategy okay. solve this uh, uh, e a u equals zero and e a b minus a half g a b g c d e c d is equal to zero And in the uh, in the in the paper, this is called a hypersurface equation. Um, this is called an evolution equation. Okay, um, and you can see now um, there are actually four of them, and here. Um, EAB is symmetric. AB, they, uh, just two indexes. So there are actually two equations. Okay. So you just need to solve this. Uh, um, this, uh, um, this uh, well, you first solve this, uh, uh, the six equations. So we're going to see how you, you actually solve it later. But um, because of the, uh, the special uh, structure, So um, it, it turns out um, <clears throat> these, uh, these two equations actually uh, implies that uh, GAB, EAB is equal to zero. OK? And uh, what you need to do is uh, you have to actually have to go back um, and use this formula. OK, so use this special. 
maybe I should write it. Okay, so this is equal to zero, and therefore you solve for uh, one more. Okay, this is because of a special structure, so you get one more here. So, so far you have actually seven of them. And then, um, these are so many equations. And you're left with uh, three other equations. Okay, so left with uh, three other equations. And they're basically uh, E R U equals zero and um, E R A equals zero. So there are actually uh, three of them. You have two here and you have one here. Okay. But now again, because of this uh, structure, so because of uh, um, this, uh, the, the special structure, special gauge, and also this double star, uh, you actually have this uh, uh, equation, uh, dr of r squared e to the 2 beta of e r u is equal to 0, and dr of r squared e of 2 beta e r a equals 0. Okay, so I didn't have time to go over this uh, detail, but uh, really you, you use uh, uh, this uh, gauge condition. And here uh, you already write down, uh, you know, the, the, uh, this uh, uh, conservation law in terms of the metric coefficient. So you can actually substitute the D. Uh, it's, it's just uh, algebra. Okay. But the point for this one here is that you can see now th this comes from the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the Bianchi equation, which is uh, satisfied. And this is why you want to solve. Okay, and really you just plug in this one here and you can see that this term will drop up if you specialize this uh, condition. So this really corresponds to this condition here and this R will correspond to this A is uh, replaced by R here. But now the good thing here is that what well, you can see to have, this, to have this one satisfied, you really just need to assume that um, it's actually equal to zero. I mean these terms are actually equal to zero at the R level set. So suffice it to, to assume um, ERU equal to zero and uh, ERA equal to zero at uh, R equal to a constant. Okay. Once it's equal to zero at a constant, and because of this uh, evolution equation, you will tell you that it's equal to zero everywhere. But of course, we can. <laughs> We can view the now infinity as a level set of R. Okay, in particular, um, R is quite plus, which is R equal to infinity. Okay, so now, um, so now we actually have this, uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, all, all ten equations here, and so the picture uh, is actually the following. So first of all, we have this uh, uh, the hyper uh, hypersurface equation. So you recall our unknowns are these. Uh, these are our unknowns. Okay, and the um, there actually uh, you can see there are four hypersurface equation. There are uh, four hypersurface equations. And the reason why they're called uh, hypersurface equation is actually the following. Um, so this is actually E, E U A is equal to zero. Okay. So I have my E U R equals zero. You can actually write it as D R beta. And it's going to be an expression that involves only H A B. And E of U A equal to zero. This is going to be an expression of R to the minus four, E to the minus two beta. H A B of U R U B, okay. and this is going to be an expression that involves only beta and H A B. Okay. 
And lastly, you have D U U U equals zero. Okay, this A here could be uh, any of the four indexes. And this actually implies uh, two times e to the minus two beta of dr of v. It's actually uh, involve uh, uh, beta or h a b. Um, beta and uh, and u b. So now you can see there's a there's a hierarchy here. Okay, so beta only involve h a b. So solve for uh, UB, you already know HAB, you already know beta, and this only involve HAB and beta. So you can actually integrate it. And uh, lastly here, uh, once you have beta and HAB here, and UA here, you can solve for this V here. Okay, so you recall all the variables are here. This is beta, and UA, and V, and HAB. And in a way that this HAB uh, should be considered as a, as a C data, and the, uh, the evolution equation. So this is uh, um, this one here uh, can be turned into an uh, equation for the, uh, the traces part of HAB. Okay, this is an evolution equation. So this is really about the, um, the this what well, this uh, because this is two indexes. Okay, um, so this is the traces part of uh, of uh, of the Einstein tensor. Of, well, the the the, the, uh, the restriction of Einstein tensor, and it actually correspond to this equation here. Okay, so once you have so you can see once you have your HAB here, uh, you can actually plug in here and you solve for beta. And once you have beta and HAB, you can plug in the right hand side here. You also have beta, and you can solve for this UB here. And once you have a H A B uh, beta and a U B here, you can solve for this uh, this B here. So there's actually a hierarchy here. Okay, um, that can actually can solve this. Huh? Uh, a on what was that? No, I'm just saying this is an expression that involves this. Oh, okay. And so this becomes ODE. Oh, that's, oh, that's a variable. Yeah, so all these are actually ODE in terms of this R variable. So that's why they're called, uh, they're actually called uh, hypersurface equation. So you actually have, uh, you know, we have the DDR direction. It's tangential to this. So you solve this, uh, um, this hypersurface equation here uh, by solving this, uh, this ODE here. And these are all first order OD. So you actually need to uh, uh, prescribe initial uh, data. And the way you prescribe it is actually uh, through this uh, I plus here. So you basically prescribe the initial data of all this variable and then solve it from, uh, from infinity. Okay. And lastly, you have this, uh, uh, this two equation. Okay. And in fact, this, uh, these two equations, they can actually, well, these two. Okay. So E, R, U. These are called supplementary equations. And these are supplementary equations on, uh, on scribe plus. Because we know uh, from, from this evolution equation, um, if they're actually equal to zero along uh, scribe, um, then actually, um, then you can actually, then, then because of this, uh, if it's actually zero at the R level set, then this is equal to zero everywhere. Okay. And uh, this equation will actually give you the, uh, the mass loss formula. In fact, um, <coughs> so let me just uh, finish off the in, in two minutes. So that's actually going to be an equation. We're really just going to look at the equation at, uh, at the now infinity. And if you look at the expansion of uh, HAB here, okay? So HAB, the, the leading term is still going to be the, uh, the standard term. And then uh, 
Y views expanded, the, the next term is actually this uh, CAB here. And you recall they all always depend on this. And big O of R to the uh, minus two here. And V uh, actually correspond to uh, leading term is going to be R and then minus, and this is a, this is a so-called a mass aspect function that I mentioned actually the other day. Okay, you notice my definition of V uh, is somehow, um, it would be funny, well, because we divide it by R, I mean, well, it's, so this is R minus 2N. Okay, so once you do this expansion here, um, then uh, at infinity, uh, you solve this, uh, this elementary equation, and then what you're going to get, uh, then this E R U equal to zero implies uh, the following equation, D U of M U X A, oh, let me just write it as D U of X M, um, this is equal to, um, I think this is equal to the quarter, A B, du of CAB minus uh, 1 over 8th um, du of CAB square and this is using the sigma two as a, as a metric and um, if you again integrate a uh, sphere because you have double divergence here this tell you that du of uh, m on s2 of dv tilde is equal to minus one eight of uh, du cab square sigma tilde dv sigma s two, and now you can see that this is again negative. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I don't really have time to go over the detail, but may, maybe uh, if you're interested, if I can go over. Uh, <laughs> You, you'll, you'll go over more detail, yeah. But now you can see that, I mean, really we're following similar strategy. You, you, you fix a you know, coordinate system. In this case, we look at uh, future now infinity, write down the, uh, the Einstein equation. And uh, one of the Einstein equation, uh, you know, actually give you um, this mass. But of course, you have to justify uh, that this actually correspond to the mass. Uh, again, this is a, you know, this de depend on this xa here. And then you just integrate this xa variable. Okay, and that will give you the, the mass at the, at the U slice. Okay, so this is considered to be the total mass at the, the, the U slice over there. Okay, so I, I guess, yeah, this, uh, these topics will be, uh, will be touched upon uh, later by, uh, by other speakers. Uh, so we can take a, a closer look. But I, I, will, I hope you get an idea of uh, what, uh, you know, what, what is um, gravitational radiation uh, is actually involved in these two kind of uh, uh, well, I wouldn't say simple. <laughs> it's already complicated enough, but uh, hopefully the structure is clear. Okay, so I'll stop there. Yeah. Okay. It, it's actually uh, quite interesting because it, it's uh, yeah. You can see these are all first order. And um, it actually depends on the C data of HAB here, okay? And uh, in, the, in the original paper of, um, of uh, uh, you know, well, in the 60s, uh, you know, Bondi sex or Bondi uh, BBM paper, uh, they actually make the assumption that HAB uh, has this, this kind of integral, uh, well, inverse integral power expansion in terms of, in terms of R here. And in fact, there's uh, something quite interesting I didn't have actually have time to, uh, to mention. So um, you can actually expand, um, you can actually expand one more time here, uh, one, more, one more term here. So this is R to the minus two. DAB UXA, okay? And uh, you recall we actually have this condition, a determinant of HAB condition. That will actually tell you that this one here is actually trace free, okay? So sigma, delta AB. CAB is equal to zero. But if you actually uh, write down this DAB part, uh, in term, you, you decompose it into the trace part and, and trace this free, free part, okay? So you can write this one here in terms of trace, trace uh, list 
plus a trace part. This is symmetric two tensor. You can always uh, do this decomposition. But if this trace is part, it's actually non-zero. And then you plug in this, uh, this data here. Uh, you're going to see that this U here will actually involve log term. Okay? And this was just dismissed uh, in the 60s. Okay? Um, and they actually give a name that's called no, no outgoing radiation. Uh, but this assumption uh, actually uh, should be challenged now because actually, uh, you know, what, later we look at this kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, space time constructed by, the, uh, by solving the Einstein equation uh, from the initial data sets, uh, Chris Sudo, Kleinerman work. That actually indicate that there should be log term there. So log, guy, log I is the physical. Log, yeah, you know, well, like log R, I mean, I, yeah, I think Chris Lowe, even in the paper, argued that log R actually has to be there. You know, whether this, the, the, existence of the, the existence of this uh, log R will indicate that the, uh, the, the now infinity, scribe plus, uh, actually has less regularity. And the original work, uh, you know, of physics, you know, in the 60s, they want to assume that there's no log term, because the, the, you know, the, you know, all these uh, typical examples, the, the scribe is actually a very regular one. You know, you always have good extension. Um, but as I said, I mean, this um, new, you know, new results in the in the past uh, few decades, uh, mathematical rigorously proved result indicated that, uh, you know, this this assumption should be challenged, and it's probably not as regular as, as what people thought. And I think this is also one of the reasons we why to to go over this uh, uh, this part here, because uh, I mean, in a way, this is a mathematician's. Job. I mean, <laughs> physicists they always like to assume things are very regular, very nice. You can do power series expansion, but uh, and and, um, and as I said, I mean, it seems that there's, there's not really uh, much restriction of uh, HAB here. Uh, we, we've been trying. I mean, there there are actually some issues that arise when you take uh, fractional power. For example, HAB is R to a, a half. Okay, there's some issue about you know the mass actually become or energy become infinite. But other than that, uh, there doesn't seem to be any, you know, you, you can actually assume any power of, uh, you know, fractional power of HAB, and you can take it as a C data, and you can plug in here, and you can actually solve this. Because in general situations, asymptote kind of thing is really tricky. Yeah, yeah, it's sure. You solve from infinity up to some right. finite data, right. some kind of right. yeah. danger. Thank you.